Welcome back, and I am so proud to announce Nojo, the finisher, my man, number one in Coach Brahman's group, Noah <laughs> Lyles. The yes, man sir. Himself. Yes, yeah. sir. I'm glad to be here, man. Appreciate you. Hey, so you just came off a championship. We're going to go straight into it. Talk to me about that 100. The world doubted you, but I never saw you waver. I saw the confidence from start to finish. Talk to us about it. Bruh. <laughs> It's a movie, man. <laughs> That's all I can say. It's a movie, bro. Uh, I knew going into here, you know, I, I've, you know, everybody want to throw out their two cents. I even made my post about what I came to do, you know, running nine six nineteen ten. You know, I still believe in my heart of hearts that I'm gonna get there. That's no doubt for myself. But you know, I knew that I had to be rock solid in what I believed in. And I've seen the progress that I made in practice. I see the progress that me and Coach are making. You know, we are, you know, Coach literally came up to me and said, there is nothing more that I wanted to do with you going into these world championships. And if Coach says that to you, you better be believing you can take on the world and more. So that's exactly how I had it in my head. We're going through the heats. You know, I get lane nine. I'm going to be honest. I never want to run in lane nine again. That, that's, <laughs> it sucks out there. It's boring. There ain't nobody to race against. You know, <laughs> you just by yourself. But I'm glad I went through it. You know, went in easy. You know, got the 19.9. And it was nice feeling because, you know, f going into the coming off of COVID at USA's, you know, I was just fighting to survive. Now it's like I'm thriving and surviving. So, you know, get through the first round, you know, you're feeling good. It's like, all right. And coach is like, hey, just do that. Just get a little more explosive, you know, put some power behind those steps, you know, be confident. We're going into the semis, you know, same matchup, you know, Omen Walla. You know, this is the boy who's saying that he ain't going to lose another 100 meters, <laughs> you know, living it up in Africa. You know, yeah. you know, it's a little different once you come out to face the world stage. So, you know, I'm like, all right, let me give you some of this U.S. power, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> we, we get out first few steps. He's right there, and I'm over here thinking, yeah, you messed up on a good one, boy. <laughs> you ain't get out. You did not get out hard enough. We get to about 40 meters. The race was mine, and I'm like, dang, man. <laughs> my urges, my fl I'm coming out of my flesh a little bit, bro. This is like I know I'm running fast, and I know that I have to slow down eventually, so I might as well have some fun doing it. <laughs> Absolutely. And going through those rounds, I'll just be honest, that first round, I know you had confidence in yourself, but to me, it didn't look like there was a clear favorite. And then the second round in the semis, you nailed it and you run 9-8. Yeah. Coach Brahman comes back and he says, Noah said he had about two or three gears left. That wasn't all of it. Oh, it definitely was not all. And it you showed it in the final. Wasn't. Yeah. Even in the final, like throughout every hundred round, I never felt like I got to reach my top end speed, which sucks because I'm like, that's what I came to world championships to do. I came to actually see how fast can I really run. So going through rounds, it's like you keep having to back yourself off. It's like flirting with, you know, getting to peak and, you know, staying within your energy level. Because, again, we have more 200 rounds to run. So I'm over here like, yeah, now I'm going into the 100. I'm giving it my all. And, you know, the, the gun goes off. And, again, I'm like, yeah, y'all didn't get a wave enough. <laughs> and, like, yeah. you done messed up. You gave me the edge I need. You know, we're getting it to, like, 40 meters left or 40 meters. I'm like, all right, I'm in the mix. We get to 60 meters. Oh, this race is mine. Because mm -hmm. if I'm first or second at 60 meters, it's over. There's no way you're going to be able to outreach my top end speed. And then we got to about like 20 meters left. And if you've seen my docuseries by now in Paris, the quote that I say is, I'm about to reach a speed that you can't hit. And it, I just said it again in my head at this championship. I'm about to reach a speed that y'all can't hit. Yeah. And I just grabbed that lead right from everybody. And I knew once I had it, it's not going away. So you received your medal yesterday. Yeah. Obviously for the 100 Journal podium. It's, it's quite emotional. Uh, how do you conserve or preserve, you know, those emotions? Because you said this is the year of the 200, you know what I mean? And you yeah. still have, you know, you it's the double lives. Yeah. <laughs> the double lives. The double is so alive, for The sure. double is alive. So, you know, uh, you still have a lot in the tank, clearly. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's crazy because I've been to, like, tons of, you know, medal ceremonies. But this is the first time that it was outside of the stadium 
and the fans are so close. I've never seen that many fans at a metal award ceremony. Mm. You know, it was packed out easily, probably about a thousand people there easily. And you know, the flag being so close to it as well. Like I, I like, and I'm usually running two hundreds. By the time the two hundred goes off, everybody's gone. You know, everybody leaves the stadium. Mm. I remember, like, even last year, you know, break the American record. Everybody was, you know, there for when we they actually put it around your neck. But as soon as they tried to set up for the podium, you know, everybody was basically gone. They, yeah. There's probably about 500 people there left, you know, out yeah. of 35,000. Yeah. You know, you know that's, that, that kind of hits different. Like, you didn't even – I didn't even really get to do a victory lap last year after that. You know, it was, it was a weird feeling. So here now I am in – winning the title of world's fastest man with a huge crowd celebrating that I got the medal, my family right there you know, watching the flag go off. And I've heard the, the anthem so many times, but all of a sudden I'm singing it in my head and here are tears in my eyes. I'm mm-hmm. like, Hey, yo, what's going on? Who turned on the water, man? You no, know, for real. And it, it, it's like being in therapy. Like, I've been in therapy so many times, and you get to a situation where you're telling your therapist something deep, and you're like, oh, it's not that serious. And all of a sudden, you start crying. Right. And you're like, it's not that serious. It's like, that's how the like the moment is. It's like, it's not that serious. It's not that serious. And then it's just everything just starts coming out. And I didn't even realize, like, how much pressure I felt yeah. in these moments, you know, trying to take on the devil realizing that you know so many people are just like bro like you're talking out your butt like there's no way you gonna win the hundred like constantly having having to do that for years like i've been telling people that i'm a sprinter for years not just the 200 the 100 and the 200 and just like no you're a 200 you're a specialist i'm like don't box me in right right. last thing i want to hear is somebody box me in so you you told the camera that was following the wrong guy you think the world following the right guy now Oh, they are now. <laughs> after Paris, they started following the right guy. I'll tell you that. They couldn't get enough of Doha after that. Honestly, I really liked what I saw in London. For me, I know you just came off uh, U.S. champs and you finished third. The world doubted what you could do here. But, I mean, Coach Brahman said you could run 19.5 at the meet. You and I had the yeah. conversation the 19.4. So what would that do for you leading up to this championship? Well, I know we had a conversation after London, and I was telling you, I had that moment of doubt, you know, I came off COVID, I was busted up, my body was hurting. It took me two weeks just to get back into regular pace. And even when I was practicing, I wasn't seeing like NOAA certified practices, you know, the times that I was seeing wasn't what I wanted. You know, it wasn't proof that I was going to come out here and run 19.4. So I was like, you know, shoot, I went up to my coach, you know, Lance Brahman and right the day before, and I said, before I start going on this long story that I might create in my head, where am I in your mind set up for running fast? You know, am I on schedule to where we started last year? Am I still on schedule to run 19.3, to run 19.2, to run 19.1? He said, you're exactly where I want, if not ahead of where you were last year and where I want you to be. And I said, all right. That means I'm going to throw every doubt that I have in my mind. He said, I expect you to run 19.5 tomorrow. I said, all right, then I'm going to run 19.5. All right, <laughs> so, so in that moment, in that thought, I was with Coach Brahman before you ran the finals. At 100. You you know, you had to relieve, you know, drain the main vein. Excuse yeah. Me. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we, we were on standby. And I said, Coach, man, I think, you know, maybe that record goes, you know, in a year or so. He said, man, I ain't thinking about a year from now. He said, I ain't even thinking about tomorrow. I'm just only thinking about, you know, getting this race over now. Yeah. You know, you stated that, you know, he's he's giving you a little insight to what he feels like you can do in the 200 meters. How fast do you feel like you can run here in the 200 meters? I'm here to break a world record. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being dead serious. Like, after going through the 100, everybody asks, where are you going to get that? 13th, you know, that point, 1300th. And I'm like, y'all didn't just see that 100? You didn't just see me PR? You didn't just see me reach top end speeds that I, I've never hit? And here I am telling you right now that I still felt that I could have ran faster in that race. And they still don't believe you. They still don't believe. They don't believe, they don't believe years, bro. Huh? But that's okay, man. That's what just makes it so much more fun when you win. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And watch that. I'm going to nerd out for a second, so bear with me. All right, all right, all right. So ran with Bolt. He runs... 
Nine five eight to run nineteen nineteen. Johan Blake runs nine six to run nineteen two. I think you are so different than any of them, but I think you can run faster. That's me personally. Mm-hmm. So you PR and run nine eight. What does that do? The other competitors that you're going to have to race in the two hundred in this championship have just showed that they can finish top sec or two or three in the hundred as well. Mm-hmm. So are you breaking this down? You're not worried about it. Like, what does that hundred do? Preparing you for the 200, because honestly, I have you as the clear face. Yeah. All right, let me nerd out. (laughs) I am different than all of them. The reason I'm different is because the 200 I have stuck with for so long, I know that thing like the front side of my hand, not the back side, the front side of my hand. (laughs) And because of that, I know where my weaknesses lie. My weaknesses lie in the first 100. We've already seen what I can do in the second hundred. Now, all these guys have been improving their hundred to get better at their 200. And they're only producing times that would rank in my top, maybe with my third fastest time, fourth fastest time, fifth fastest time ever run. Now, I'm PRing in the hundred, the worst part of my race, already running 1931. Not only am I going to run a faster 100, automatically that makes my second 100 faster. If you can't see the vision now, you're you're going to be real shocked when we run this 200 on Friday. So you're saying 18. Is that attainable? It's attainable for you. 18 has never been out of my mind. By the time I'm done with my career, I want to see 18.6. Jeez. And if I don't get it, who cares? (laughs) <laughs> hey, I look, went for it. I never doubt you. Hey, bro, eighteen six like that. I, I'm. That's a second faster than my PR. I suck. <laughs> that's crazy. Hey, man, that's buying about four seconds faster than me, man. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, but hey, listen, we're gonna let your your hamstrings have a break, man. We appreciate you coming <laughs> out and uh, and speaking with us. Obviously, you've had great success in this championships and into your career up until this point. And uh, we wish you all the best going into these 200 meter rounds and these finals, and and also that relay. You know, we can't forget about that. I want you to come full circle, but we're gonna keep the main I thing the main it, thing. You know. But before we go, you wanna know, you wanna hear something crazy? I think I've told you this before, but I don't know. You know, I started as a high jumper. Here we go. Here I we go. wanted to go to the Olympics for high jump. What? Not the 200. We the coolest, man. What? What? We're the and coolest. Guess you who wanted to be a high I jumper watched. Too. Who? All throughout middle and high school. Come on, man. Eric, bro. Hey, man. Hey, bro. You this man was the dog. We're supposed to be together right now. Nah, man. This Listen, man was see? the dog. That's, I'm two he'd for jump, two right now. He'd get over the bar. He'd show off. Maybe oh, yeah, on like his chest, too. jumping, doing backflips. Bro, this was the man. This is the showman. This was the first showman that I really saw that I was like, yeah, I can emulate that. I, I appreciate I can bring that. I appreciate that. And I respect it, but I feel like a little part of me is like, oh, he just stabbed me in the... Not the back, the stomach. He did it right in my face. Well, look, well, look who I ended up with. So exactly, you, I can't. You, got, it can't you, you can't be that bad. Listen, bro. You, you, you won, <laughs> but you know, at the end of the day, the jumpers are the coolest, ladies and gentlemen. That's just and not the coolest, I, because right now you carrying the mantle well. You know what I mean? But I like to think. And we all cool. That I'm, I, yeah, we're all cool. But <laughs> I, appreci- all cool. I appreciate you being inspired, being inspired by my shenanigans. Speaking of that, this is the last thing I bring up. And we had a conversation about this before. So we had a conversation about the relationship between you and Fred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now. Speak up. <laughs> maybe not the best friends. Y'all aren't going to barbecues, but I feel like there's a level of respect between the both of you. Yeah. I I feel that a lot of people will see the rivalries on TV and expect that to be your real life. The rivalries are for the sport. We both have the same common goal. We cannot both win. It's just a fact. And we both understand that. But what we can respect is that when we show up on the line is that we're going to be given our 110% to make sure that we win. And we both understand the drive and the hunger that we have to go up. So if I'm getting on stage and saying I'm going to win and he doesn't say that he's going to win, I'm going to be disappointed. Yeah. Because when we show up at a championship, I want everybody to have the mentality that I'm here to win. And I don't care who or what I have to go through to get that. I'm going to make it happen. That's and it. I think the greatest testament to that is you all go out there and I believe you'll both be on the straightaways on the relay. 
Yeah. You put all rivalry aside and y'all figure out a way to work together and get yeah. that stick around first for Team USA. Exactly. We all understand the goal and we all want it. And we're willing to put everything aside to make sure we're going to get it. Man, they only give out three medals. They only give out three. That's it. <laughs> in the world. Yeah. yeah. The world. That means you're top three. You're the best three in the world. Can you think of anything else that you might be the top three of in the world besides this? Me, maybe Call of Duty. I'm nice. <laughs> me, they paying I'm... you to do Call of Duty? Nah, nah, they ain't paying me. Then you ain't top three. I ain't top three. You're right. You're absolutely right. I got to get right. I oh, get I'm working right. on being top three in anime. I got an anime coach now. You, you got oh, yeah, a long yeah. way to go, but I think with the right coach. Yeah, man. He's going to get me there, right? I think we can get you. You got to get your chakras lined up, man. Exactly. Yeah, man, man. <laughs> I'm but learning. No, I'm learning. But no, we appreciate your time, man. No and problem, uh, we wish you, you know, continued success. And, and thanks for tuning in with. No, nah, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. And if you haven't, tune in to Noah's docuseries and uh, keep up with what he has going on on and off the track. Exactly. We got, hey, if you can't get you, you don't want to pay for Peacock, you still got YouTube. We got the Unseen Journey going on. I'm teaching people how to run 200s. I'm teaching everybody how to get into their mental game. You know, we got a lot of fun things. Kamea, so. Maya is all that. <laughs> and the Lyles Brothers Foundation. And the Lyles Brothers Sports Foundation. You know, we're trying to make sure that the youth get the t- tools they can have to be great as well. And yeah, no allows, ladies and gentlemen.